Hey. Oh, nice. That was pretty good. That was very, uh, uh, what is it, CSI? The CSI yeah. Guy? Hey. Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about? I don't remember. Anyway, hey. he, did, he did something with glasses. It's episode what? Uh, 101. 101 on your radio dial. Highway 101, baby. That's right. Of? Alex and Jim. Analyze. Billy Joel lyrics. Gonna be tough to live up to the title today. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> you forget the number, right? You've done that now and then. I forget the number a lot. And then I, I realized they just pointed out you for the name. I'd be very worried if you forgot that part. <laughs> I only know the numbers now. I have a concern. Uh, one, one of... Uh, uh, Billy uh, and Joel, I don't remember... Abercrombie and Fitch. Analyze <laughs> Billy Joel exists. Yes. Watch that. Uh, my friend and I, by the way, have an, I have an idea for a really short podcast. And it's called We Have an Idea for a Podcast. And it's just one of us saying something like, and I'm doing it here because there's no way we're going to do this, but because we're too lazy. But I like the idea is it's me going, ah, oh, it's almost summertime, man. We should pull out the grill and start, you know, just barbecuing. And then him going, oh, that's a great idea for a podcast. It's two guys grilling. And we're like, do you know a lot about grills? No. Next episode is five minutes of like, just going, hey, I was watching such and such on TV. We should do a podcast about that. Do you watch every episode? No. That's just the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Because he's got so many friends who aren't in the entertainment business at all. Yeah. Which is a good way to describe me sometimes. Um, <laughs> they will, he, they'll could be in a bar having a conversation that I'm sure is mildly amusing and they're drunk. Yes. And then he'll, yes. his friend, yeah, and his friend will always go, man, this should be the podcast. <laughs> yeah, this should be the show. Talking yeah. about what the show should be. Yeah. <laughs> That's what people are interested in. And uh and and you so you're not a comedian or and you've never been recorded, so you don't know. Okay, good. Yes, you're gonna be great at this. Yeah. Why on earth? I don't understand why people want to be in the entertainment business. Yeah. Aside from like the, the occasional story of people making a lot of money doing it. Yeah. But the the whole rest of it is real rough and stinks. Yeah, the uh, the ability of every of anybody to do a podcast really shows the flaw in democracy. It really demonstrates <laughs> one of the many. Um, <laughs> by the way, a great idea for a podcast is I should just read the text I get from my mom. Yeah, yeah, a very very long podcast. This is a short one. Should I do it? Do it. Alex, real fast. I'm going to meet Betty at Chili's. All is good. Love you. Talk later. Love you. Ciao. The wind is horrible. I played one hole today, and I was afraid the cart would flip over. Love you. Ciao. Urgent. Urgent information she had to get to me. That's actually, I will say, I'm sure you'd agree that at least as far as messages go, that's kind of sweet. It's uh, as in short and, and also just checking in. I'm going to Chili's. I'm going to Chili's with Betty. Like, there's not a lot of like hurtful things in that. I mean, unless you guys have a Chili story that I don't know. No, I mean, wait, wait till she gets back from Chili's. Then there's going to be <laughs> the text. That the... text. Oh lord, things are going to go wrong at Chili's. Ah. <laughs> Uh, oh, before we get to the song, I will just have to say, how good looking am I now that I've lost all this weight? You're real good looking. Look at this chicken neck. Look at that. <laughs> you need like a binder clip. I, yes. <laughs> I do love the way I feel, though. I haven't felt this physically good in a decade. Yeah, massive difference. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. The most uh, glaring difference. Huh? What's the most glaring uh, difference? Energy. Yeah. 
period. And also because I'm eating correctly and I didn't know that I wasn't eating correctly before either. Uh-huh. Cause I was just like, yeah, yeah, kids, you had an idea. Yeah. I probably could have figured out that not every meal is cake meal. Yeah. But because I cut carbs out so low, except for like veggies and stuff, there was this weird thing will happen after I eat. I'll eat food and don't immediately go to sleep. Oh, yeah. It's odd. I was at, I was having food with my friend and he still eats like a moron and that's fine. And I watched it. We ate and I'm up doing stuff and I looked over at the table and he was going... <laughs> oh. it's like i remember that yeah i like being in shape it well i like being in this shape i'm not in shape but i'm in a better shape than yeah. I was. you're moving towards the correct shape yeah i'm in a, a more recognizable human form perfect is what i am <laughs> uh, almost out of desperation i picked this song yeah and then i made a list and i swear to god some of the songs i made on the list i'm like i had to triple check because i felt like we'd done them before the list of songs that we have not done yet yeah the one i sent to you so that you have a shot at picking something right i was like we uh, why did i pick, start a list at the beginning of the fucking podcast <laughs> because of the the uh, carbs because of the carbs, I was tired. I was just too tired. Barked it up. But I picked a song that's very popular. Yep. Beloved. Yeah. Maybe. Oddly beloved. I'd say be liked. Be liked. <laughs> In my house. Yeah. But I don't mean by us. I mean by the general populace. Oh, yeah. No, it went to number one. I think this was a number one hit. I think it was a number one hit. That, by the way, tells you everything that's wrong with people and the music industry because I don't mind that this is number one. I don't, because fine. Yeah, it's the but guys then, who it. But then why wasn't Scenes from an Italian Restaurant number one? And it wasn't anywhere near. Yeah. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. There's better songs on the same album. Yeah. For- and why is that the case? But the... The uh, by the way, if a guy says this to you, he might be making a, an excuse. He probably did start the fire if he says this to you, because yeah, it's very defensive. That's what I'll say right away about the song is I get the impression that he did start the fucking fire. Because <laughs> yeah, why would you say it so many times? Yeah, bro, I, I didn't accuse you of anything. <laughs> huh? Huh? I didn't even mention fire. It's like uh, at the end in Law and Order when they're like, oh, hey, that detail of the crime wasn't in the newspaper. How did you know about it? And they're like, oh, fuck, because I did it. (laughs) My favorite, there's a Law and Order, I think it's Law and Order, where there's a kid who's a psychopath. He's, I don't know what what that thing is where a person's just never going to be decent because their brain is broken. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, psychopath sounds right. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, but he's a kid, and he and everybody's pretty sure the kid committed this murder, and he's like twelve, and there's yeah. a doctor who testifies, and the doctor is an expert in this, and the doctor decides to shoot him, and he does, <laughs> and he gets away with it by a trick, and he tricks the jury, and then at the end he goes, yeah, I tricked the jury, and he goes, you can live with that, and he goes, you know the difference between me and that kid, I won't kill again, it's great. Really great. Strong argument for shooting kids. Finally. <laughs> someone has the courage. Yeah. Thank you, Big Wolf. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of um okay arguments, but this one's strong. <laughs> uh, you yeah, look good too. Have I, you lost weight? I'm hovering around the same. Hovering's good too. I'm I got a haircut. That helps. Yeah, you look good. I'm doing that thing where I work out twice a week pretty hard with a trainer nice and uh, sue and i do these good long walks a couple times a week so i'm doing a lot of that stuff right but then i'm uh eating like an idiot (laughs) so i'm like 
I have muscles, but also fat. Yeah. At least though, you keep moving. You got your cardiovascular system because being good, because you got the kind of job that not as bad as a true office job. No. But still on the cusp of that sitting yeah. problem. There's a lot of sitting. Yeah. There's a lot of up and about and walking and standing. But there's a lot of sitting and there's a lot of uh, angst and stress. Yeah. And pressure. And snacks. Luckily, it's four days a week and we get a lot of weeks off. Yeah. And so it's, you know, mitigated. But yeah, I do think about it and I do drink a lot of water while I'm there <laughs> and things like that and try to eat stainly. Uh, you know what? I'm such a good eater until 10 30 p.m. <laughs> and then I'm an eight-year-old boy. Yeah, me too. So what I have to do is just stop. Well, I have to I should I, I have to go to bed. Like that's what works. Yeah. I won't stop. Quick comment about your show. Uh Mike Berbiglia was so entertaining. Oh man. He's I wild. Love- I love it. I think he knows that he bothers Seth a little bit. <laughs> and I think he loves it. <laughs> is Mike Berbiglia Seth's Jim Bruce? <laughs> he might he might be. He's got he's got elements. Where you're like, yeah, Seth hated him at first, but he loves the guy, but Lord. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, he's annoying, but he's really good at it. That's yes. Well. <laughs> I've watched every one of his specials. They're great. They're really great. He's carved his own lane in a, a world where it's very hard to carve your own lane anymore. Yep. Um, Old Man at the Pool is so good. So good. <laughs> yeah. You uh, did. Do you watch all the specials? Have you watched them all? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I, he, he, he draws you in so nicely. Such a very specific kind of stand up where I'm almost tempted to think. I know he thinks of himself as a stand-up, but that almost feels insulting to what he's doing because he's doing a yeah. little more than stand-up. He was, I feel like originally he was more traditional. Yeah. The stand-up who told stories and then he's like, what if I just tell one real long story <laughs> with some stand-up inside it? Yeah, it's it's very lovely and I'm sure a pain in the ass to develop, but man, I'm down to it. So, yeah. I will tell you that when you first look, first, the shape of these lyrics is uh, (laughs) god-awful. Yeah, real square. This looks, if you didn't know what it was, let's say you didn't speak English or read English. Maybe you spoke it, but you just couldn't read. You might think this was a grocery list. (laughs) I mean, it is? It just is. So It is just a list. But here's what I will say before we start. Okay. I think it is a decent thesis. I think it is a critique of especially young people who think that everything is happening for the first time. That they're the only people who grew up with weird politics, interesting sports, hot actresses, um, important works of art yeah like the world was just a gray mist until they were born and now everything's interesting i think yeah. said, like look it was always interesting dangerous weird oppressive yeah all the things we're already there so yeah. get over it it's a little get over yourself song which is very billy joel which is very billy joel I'm going to tell you how things are, you young piece of shit. (laughs) And the one thing that's, you're right, and it occurs to me that in both ends, too, which is like, I'm lucky, I've said this before, but I'll say it quick. I'm lucky that my father hated the generation's music before me rather than my generation's. So (laughs) I learned right away how dumb it is to critique new music just because you don't like it so i've never fallen into that trap yeah and i think i never will i think that's one thing that i won't old man on which is music when i was a kid because the reality is billy eilish isn't for me but lord she's talented 
Lord, she's talented. And she's wonderful and she's a fun person. And I'm like, well, hopefully I'll always remember that deep into my, however old I get is just, if I'm not listening to music, new music, half of it's because I'm deep. <laughs> it's nothing to do with the music. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and that people were terrible when I was a kid. Like I despise the habit of like, particularly conservatives, to lament how much better it was when we all went to church and the olden days and ignoring all the horse shit that went on that was cruel and uh, unpleasant and unfair. Amen. Like uh, somebody said, why were somebody had posted, why weren't there any trans kids in the 90s? I saw that. And the re answer is, of course, they were, you fuck nut. Forever. And just as many, not not less, not more, as yeah. a percentage of the population, it's not changed. Yeah, you're not remembering the 90s. You are remembering like a version that was presented by, I don't know, Disney or whatever. It just, you are saying that something didn't exist because you didn't hear about it it's well, so and if you did hear about it the only thing you heard about was oh this one trans person was murdered right or this one trans person took their own life yeah not this one trans person has a nice job and some social uh media significance because they're allowed to live now that's all you didn't know that's all yeah it's not a coincidence that their their day is a day of visibility. Yeah. You know, remember in the 60s where there were nobody was gay. Right. Wasn't that great? Yeah. But and also and remember when nobody was Jewish because they were quiet about it. There were no gangs. Yeah. They were, so they weren't gangs. Yeah. It's just absurd the whole thing is just anyway that's what the <laughs> song's about which is pretty awesome yeah Don't but know about the grocery list approach though yeah well it's funny the way that you describe the thesis kind of maybe sells me on the grocery list already before saying it because it gets it gets over the lyrics being repetitive in a different way if it was just right. like him telling you things were all the same, that probably wouldn't work. Yeah. Rather it's like uh, he's doing the old man thing where you challenge him on something and then he just gives you a list, which yeah. is what you will go like, hey, there are no good white basketball players. And old man will just go, John Stockton, Steve Kerr. And they right. just make, they don't argue with you. They just give you the list that proves you're wrong. And then, yeah, which is a great approach. Yep. It's a real shutter upper. <laughs> oh, who doesn't like a good shutter upper? Oh my goodness. Old guys, we love them. All right. So I guess one of the things we'll do is every now and then, if there's something where we're like, what is that? Or maybe we'll recognize everything. All right. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I think, huh? I think from experience, I don't know everything in this song. <laughs> <laughs> there's Harry Truman, Doris Day. Red China, Johnny Ray. Who's Johnny Ray? Hey, Ray, I'm not sure about. I feel like a rock star. Okay. I feel like maybe I'll have an open tab for frantic Googling. <laughs> All right, you be the frantic Googler. Isn't that, wasn't that your uh, superhero name, the frantic Googler? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Singer-songwriter. All right. Ray. South Pacific... Walter Winchell. By the way, Walter Winchell, of course, a newspaper man, right? Uh, radio man, wasn't he? Radio, you're right. I cannot hear Walter Winchell every time without thinking of Winchell's Donuts. And I feel like, yes, I feel like he was uh, hyper conservative. Yeah, and he was the voice of a, and probably at a time when you needed people to be hyper, when that was the popular guy, I mean to say. Right. Yeah. But like not today's hyper conservative. Like I think he still was fine with voting. Yeah. Joe DiMaggio. 
And they're not in a particular order, are they, really? Um, they're roughly in chronological order. Okay. Verses, I think, are in chronological order, but the stuff in them, not necessarily. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, um, what, what, what else to say other than Winchell's Donuts? I think he was referencing <laughs> Winchell's Donuts. That's my analysis. <laughs> That's your takeaway from yeah. the first two lines. <laughs> Great. Uh, you want to do the rest of the chunk or? Oh, okay. Yeah, they're just broken up different. I'll do the next one too. Joe right. McCarthy. Of course, we're yeah. referencing McCarthyism. I assume not just that he existed. Richard <laughs> Nixon, Studebaker. Hey, were Studebaker cars, they were the makeout car, right? I feel like from Happy Days, it, yes. <laughs> I think that's one of the things they were known for being good for. Yeah. Well, most of the cars then, I think, they're so spacious. Yeah. By the way, uh, there's a Japanese car commercial, fairly modern, that outright says that that's what the car's good for. Right. And that's amazing to me. And and they don't mean making out, too. They mean full on, you know. Getting it all. Yeah, getting things done. Yeah. <laughs> television what's this television you speak of the beginning of the end that's what it was yeah north korea south korea marilyn monroe hey how long as an as a as a person did it take you or am i alone in this dumbness to remember south korea's the good one <laughs> yeah uh, you might be dumb in this one i think i am because south um, as an American, I don't have a positive view of the South. And that's not even fair because there's a lot of the South that's fine. And there's a lot of them that was plenty of plenty racist and still is. Absolutely. But for whatever reason, when I would think of South Korea, I would think, right. well, that's got to be the bad <laughs> ones in the South. There is a lot of negativity. And even in cities, the, usually the South side is not great. Yeah. <laughs> but you're That's saying funny. I'm kind of alone and taking a while to get that. <laughs> yeah, you might be dumb. Yeah, I um, think so. I grew up in the military where everyone's dad went to South Korea for a while. Okay. I knew early. They're like, oh, that one's okay to go to. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. It's it and that they always so that my takeaway is that I don't understand a lot of geopolitical things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. All right. Rosenbergs. I forget. Jews. Um, I Jews. believe they were they the Soviet spies. Yes, I believe that's the deal. And I think maybe there's some question about whether they really were, right? Yes. Executed for espionage. Yeah, it it may be that they were either framed or uh, uh, hornswoggled because they were Jewish. Yeah, I think that's what, what I'm remembering, and uh, that uh, people aren't always nice to Jews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leave that. We didn't start the fire. Yeah. Well, we're never nice to Jews. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> H bomb. Yeah. Sugar. Bag. Well, I wonder what Sugar Ray, this has got to be Sugar Ray Robinson, right? I would think, yeah. This is like six, late 50s. Early yeah. 60s. It's funny Sugar how many Sugar Rays there's been, including Sugar Ray. <laughs> including and not, not limited to. Yeah. The great Sugar Ray. Great Sugar. Uh, it's a great nickname if your name is Ray. Yeah, true. I should have told Johnny Ray. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pan Moon Jom is where the Korean War peace talks took place. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you are correct. I know that from an episode of MASH. I only know things from old sitcoms. <laughs> uh, Brando. The King and I. That's an odd one to put in there. It's you know, It feels like one to stick in because it'll rhyme with a lot of stuff. Yeah, but it jumps out because I'm like, it doesn't feel like the king and I had anything to do with any fires. It's a play. <laughs> right. Like, oh, we had plays back then too, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what. I feel like maybe there was controversy around 
him being sort of a brown man making out with a white lady. Oh, you're right. You are right. That's valid. Okay. <laughs> That's valid. They shouldn't do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Catcher in the Rye, which we know is beloved by all serial killers. Yes. Uh, Eisenhower. Vaccine. Have you gotten the Eisenhower vaccine? <laughs> <laughs> I've been meaning to. Yeah. I should I should just do it. Yeah, listen, I've never gotten Eisenhower. So and I got the vaccine, so it works. As long as everybody else has it, why do I have to get it? That's right. You're hoping for her immunity from Eisenhower. I'm not gonna be exposed to Eisenhower. Uh, England's got a new queen. Yep. Yeah, who is now dead. Now recently dead. Yeah, Good. Lizzie's in a box. Yep. Marciano, another boxer. Yep. Liberace. Okay. Yep. Uh, we had gay dudes. We had flamboyant gay dudes. Santayana. I'm out. What's Santayana? Santayana. It says Santayana goodbye, right? Santayana goodbye. Let's see. San... Oh. A philosopher? Oh. George Santayana he was a Spanish-American philosopher, essayist. Okay. Um, was, oh, I see. He was kind of chased out of Harvard and spent the rest of his life in Europe. Yeah. Do you think we include Liberace because, is Liberace in here because his main significance, other than he was a brilliant performer, he really was a very great pianist. Amen was the part where he was as flamboyantly obviously gay as could be, and yet understood at the time to be a ladies' man. Right. So strange. It's honestly, it's the thing like if you were to tell somebody, you know, the old joke about, you know, you know, famous Jews and you mentioned Mel Brooks, Mel Brooks Jewish, like, Mel Brooks is as Jewish as Liberace is gay, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think, we you think have you never Have you never seen somebody who was out and proud and... Not in the 50s, they had not. To the point, by the way, uh, worth mentioning, though, again, I've mentioned this before, but who cares? That's what I do. He <laughs> sued newspaper, a newspaper for suggesting he was gay. And he won. Yeah. He got money from them because they slandered him. Right. I wonder if you could do that now. I probably not. I don't. Well, so probably for a number of reasons. Like if somebody said that, say, Seth was gay. Yeah. Number one, Seth would go, oh, I'm not. But probably he wouldn't even mention it because he wouldn't be worried about it. Right. Yes. There's no real repercussions or not. Certainly not the kinds of repercussions there used to be. Yeah. And also nobody would ever think he was gay. No right. Would... Yeah. Or like, uh, say, Chris Hemsworth or something. Right. Yeah. I wonder. I'll bet like, there are quiet lawsuits about that stuff. Yeah. I bet it would. It could still wreck your career. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure Tom Cruise would still sue you. Yeah. Well, not himself. Yeah. The church. The he, church would come for you. That's true. And I believe he's won a lawsuit or two in that regard. I think so. Yeah, don't mess with him. Yeah. And he could still run really fast, too. That's true. So... <laughs> That's I'll tell you, true. goodbye. So, wow, interesting choice. You know, this strikes me that if you um, are, are an old man making a list of the big events and stuff that you remember, it matters where you're from and what you do for a living. Yeah. A lot of these inclusions are about him having been a boxer. Yeah. Grown up on Long Island, caring a lot about baseball. There's a lot of baseball mentions. Right. Having, uh, you know, being Jewish. Did being you? 
Yeah. Did you see Civil War, the Marvel movie? Uh, I did. I don't remember much about it. So there's a scene between him and um, whoever else. I can't remember. But he's he's making a list of uh, Captain America, I should say, is making a list of things he needs to catch up on. You know, and it's like one of the things he suggests is Marvin Gaye. And they do a cutaway of the list. They made a different list for every country the movie was in. <laughs> because right. of that very thing you're saying, which is these things matter unless you're not from. There's a whole bunch of history that never mattered to you or I because we're Americans. and Yeah. We're barely aware that there is a rest of the world. <laughs> right. We don't need them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it does feel like, oh, you know, I'm sure like the existence of Liberace had more of an impact on a young piano player. Yep. Right on someone else. Yep. So it's very funny to me to a lot of these are very sort of universal. And then there's occasionally one where you're like, oh, you just grew up on Long Island. Yeah. The significance of Liberace is, I think, cemented by the fact that uh, Bugs Bunny did an impression of Liberace. Yeah. So he mattered that much because that's a lot to matter. It was huge. Yeah. And Bugs Bunny only did a few impressions. <laughs> it wasn't, the the heart of his yeah. act wasn't the impression. Yeah. yeah. Most of his act was observational stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, well, let me read this. I don't know if you're familiar with this particular lyric, but uh, we, uh -huh. we, us, collectively, didn't start the fire. Uh -huh. It was always burning since the world's been turning, which is accurate because the first uh, before <laughs> the Jurassic era, uh, before the before the first extinction, which was plants, I can't even remember the pro yeah. era, maybe, but there was a time when it was all fire. Right. And I think that's what he's referencing. I think that that's what this is about. That's probably it. Yeah, he's yeah. talking. You know, when all the, we were still getting hit with meteors, which is where some people think that life was seeded from outer space. That's what this is about. <laughs> um, th this is the part where the song is not in chronological order. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was definitely before Liberace. Oh, way before Liberace. Liberace, uh, uh, most biologists will tell you that a Liberace couldn't have even lived on the earth at that point. Sure. It yeah. would, a lot of methane in the atmosphere. Yeah, and that's what they, that's what biologists will always talk about is whether or not an atmosphere can sustain a Liberace. Right. It's a unit of science. <laughs> a unit of Liberace's. <laughs> it's always been burning since the world's been turning. We didn't start the fire. No, we didn't light it, but we tried to fight it. Now, all joking aside, we didn't light it, but we tried to fight it is a good lyric and a sad lyric. And a sad lyric. It is, uh, yeah, there's some futility. Yeah. The whole idea that you're going to make the world good <laughs> yeah and i will tell you i like in music futility or sadness within a, a bop i've told said that before but yeah. I, I like it when it's fast and da, 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 and then there's something shitty i like that in music i'm with you yes upbeat bops with uh just gutting messaging yeah <laughs> i'm a big fan and this is having never thought of it this way because this is a song you just kind of go okay well Although live, I will say it's a killer. I loved seeing it live. Yeah. I like the fire, the fire effect. Yeah. I also like the part where he has said that if he can, he said it's tough. If I can remember the first word, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm always hoping I'll be great if I was there the night he forgot one of the first lines. <laughs> uh, right. um, do you want to start the next? part and then i'll take over and sure. that'll be, you'll have to read the chorus at least once <laughs> <laughs> joseph stalin very familiar Malenkov. don't know Malenkov. 
Let me look it up. Google OA. Joseph Stalin, Malenkov. Soviet politician who briefly succeeded Joseph Stalin. Oh. He relinquished control of the party apparatus in exchange for remaining premier and first among equals. Ah, interesting. So he stepped down probably to avoid getting killed. Got it. Okay, okay. great. Well, that part's in chronological order. Yeah. Nasser. I believe the leader of Egypt. Former president of Egypt. Yeah, good, good job. Uh, secular nationalist approach. Ah, dope. I like a secular nationalist. I like the secular part for sure. Yeah, good times. And Prokofiev. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel like an idiot. By the way, how much of this do you think was about, I'm going to put in stuff that you will not find in any other song? That'd be, yeah. Oh, another pianist. Another pianist, Russian composer and pianist. Russian composer. Like Russian verse. All right. Rockefeller, that one we know. Yeah. Campanella, baseball, right? Yeah, I think so. Let's look Blue Campanella? Yeah, you're right. Communist block. All right. The communist block is in place. Yeah. Roy Kong. Awful person. Right. Donald Trump's uh, mentor. Or is that, is Roy Kong, hold on a minute. Kong. Roy Kong. American lawyer. Yeah. He mentored Donald Trump in the ways of evil. Yeah. So they part of these. McCarthyism. Um, and uh, died of AIDS, I believe. Was a well, secret, secretly gay fellow. Probably one of the nicest things you could say about AIDS. Right? <laughs> Got that one, right? Yep. Juan Perón. You know who that is, right? Uh, don't cry for me, Argentina, right? There you go. Ava Perón, <laughs> he was in charge. You're right. Toscanini. Composer. Yeah. Dacron. Uh, kind of yogurt. <laughs> what? Kind of yogurt? <laughs> uh, I think it's a fabric. And Kron yeah. It is. Yeah. Why? What? Fucking killing it. Dian Bien Phu Falls. Is that Saigon? Yeah, it's got to be right. Dian. Bien <laughs> Falls. Battle of Dian Fian Fu. The Elk in the, uh, the first Indochina war that took place between March 13th and May 7th. Uh -huh. Close okay. to wow. Boy. We're, we're in the weeds now. Wow. Okay, here we go. Rock around the clock. <laughs> Got it. Bill, Bill Haley and the Comets. Bill Haley in the comments. Yeah. Uh, Bill Haley considered father of rock and roll and to some people because he's really the one who, by the, by the way, you, you've heard um, Shake, Rattle, and Roll by Bill Haley in the comments. Sure. If you hear the original, it's much dirtier because it was a blues song. So he's one of those artists that, and I don't say this like he was being bad for doing this because otherwise it wasn't going to happen, but he's definitely the white artist who covered a song created by a black artist yep. and mainstreamed it. Right. But I, I don't even think you could call that appropriation because that needed to happen at the time. For the song to get any respect. Yeah. For it to get respect for it to get no, and for the black artists to eventually people go, oh, I wonder if there's a better version of this. <laughs> right. This one's a little squeaky. Yeah. There's a, song called Tweedledee D and it's a yeah. silly song but um the black artist who does it, I can't remember her name I'm gonna look it up because she's brilliant uh let me see I want to give her a proper shout out her <laughs> shout out this is this is the place because I, I truly do Laverne Baker Laverne Baker oh, yeah, yeah there's this stupid hit that just some the whitest, whitest lady does, you know, just, 
And it's just bereft of sexual tension, bereft of anything. Whereas her version of it is just great. And the lyrics are exactly the same. She's not saying anything dirty. It's just that she infuses it with such energy. Right. Rock around the clock. Okay. Einstein. I no idea. No idea. Some idiot. Yeah. James Dean. Sausage guy. Sausage guy. <laughs> Brooklyn's got a winning team. That would be no, that would be the Dodgers, right? Yeah, that's the Dodgers. At that time. Okay, that's cool. I guess they were uh bums for a long time and then they got good. And then they left, right? And then they left, yeah. And I think that comes up later in the song. Yeah. Davy Crockett, Peter Pan, weird inclusion. Yeah. Another rhymer, I think. Elvis Presley, Disneyland. So going back to why would we include Peter Pan, is it because, well, the only thing I could think is that all those things were significant at the time, and the writer of Peter Pan is a little uh, complicated. The what is? The writer of Peter Pan is a little caught, the author. Yes. Because I believe he liked young folks. Ah, uh, yes. And so I wonder how I wonder how soon that was known, or if that was could be part of the era where, yeah, it's known and we don't mind. Yeah, this feels like just like here are some things we that were entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, followed by Bardo, great. Yeah, Budapest. Okay, it was already there, so I don't know why it's <laughs> like Budapest has been there for a long time, or was it? Let we got to figure out why. Why Budapest in the looks like early sixties? Oh, was that when? Or was that would that be when? Um... The Buddhists got jacked up, and um, their well, what's their what's their guy's name? Who's which guy? They're they're the guy the living. Fuck, I can't remember anything. I don't know. Wartime damage, February, but host the 90s European figure skating. Uh, uh, Summer Olympics, <laughs> maybe. World Rhythmic Gymnastic Championships in 1963. That's probably it. That's got, well, okay. <laughs> Alabama. We know why that's in there. That's not good, yeah. That's not good. That's definitely a thing that uh, they did start the fire. Yeah, they started a number of fires. All sort of T-shaped fires in my room. Remember, it's a lot of T-shaped <laughs> fires. Fires, they call them. Uh, Khrushchev. More Soviet stuff. The Soviet thing was a, a big worry. Remember, even when we were young children. It was. It was a lot of like, there's going to be a nuclear war with the Soviets. We had a lot of, the, there's a bear in the world. Enjoy anything. Yeah. <laughs> Feel scared all the time. It worked. I did. <laughs> and look at me now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't look at me. Prince Disgrace. Prince Disgrace. Yep. Monaco. Peyton Place, very popular soap opera. Yeah. And I love this. Trouble in the Suez. <laughs> this is the first time he gives us a hint of like why the thing is in the song. Yeah. He didn't just say like Suez Canal. <laughs> it was like, oh, there was trouble. Like most of the stuff that's in this song could have trouble in front of it. Yeah. Trouble in Budapest. Trouble in the Space Monkey Mafia. <laughs> uh, the Suez Crisis. Yeah. International humiliation for the British and the French in the wake of the Cold War. All right. Yeah, that one makes sense. We love a good humiliation. We didn't start the fire. Nope. It was always burning. Uh, true. The world's been turning, which is the whole time it's existed, I think. Yeah, it's a long fire. A long fire. 
Um, we didn't start the fire. No, we didn't light it, but we tried to fight it. We tried. Past tense, by the way. We are not trying anymore. Oh, yeah. I don't think he meant to do, but it is worth <laughs> mentioning that we've given up on most everything. I think it's intentional because we didn't start the fire. We tried to fight it because this song is almost a handoff, too. Yeah. Like, hey, young kids, we tried to fight it. Here's the fire. Yep. My recommendation to you is that you also try to fight it, but don't expect any success. And I will tell you something for sure. The generation of the 60s and 70s kids who tried to fight it definitely gave up. Yep. Like, when the hippies gave up, they surrendered. Real hard. Man, they were like, yeah, and now, you know what we've decided? We're going to be shitty. <laughs> By and large. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, yeah, past tense for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Little Rock. Okay, I think we're good with Little Rock. Huh? Pasternak. Googling. Okay. <laughs> I like that we have a lot of the same uh, missing information. Yeah. Oh, he was the author of <laughs> Dr. Zhivago. Ah, that's a dumb inclusion. <laughs> or another Russian poet. Oh, wow. Mickey Mantle, also a Russian poet. Mm -hmm. Kerouac. Okay. Kerouac is a big deal. And he is Kerouac. funny as how little of a big deal he is now. That is true. That's funny in a way, just how... I mean, yeah, guy or man or to a generation, but it's not like, I mean, I, there's going to be people who in college, he's going to matter to them a little bit, but not really. Not really. It feels like he mattered to like his immediate generation. And then a lot of those people came to matter a lot. Yeah. More than he did. That's interesting. He's like um, Nielsen, you know, the uh, musician where he mattered a lot to the Beatles Right, but you'd be hard pressed to get people to remember Nielsen, and he was great. He was great. I don't know him, but I'm sure he was great. <laughs> you know of him? He, of course, he would do a lot of a lot of his songs were pretty influential. But he also had that song called "You've Broken My Heart, You're Torn It Apart." So fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that song, which was way ahead of its time as far as being a song that had a curse. <laughs> Yeah, way out of its time. <laughs> he also <laughs> did the music for The Point. The Point. If you remember that 70s cartoon that was about, really at the end of the day, it was about how it's okay to be different. That's what that was about. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah. Yeah, this That's kid who didn't have a point on his head and got ostracized <laughs> because he didn't have one. So he got thrown out of town. Wow. Yeah. I don't remember at all. Yeah, it's pretty entertaining. Uh, Sputnik, that would, of course, be one of the reasons we even bothered to go to the, the moon. Beginning of the space age, and also Russian again. Yep, Russian again. Choi and Lai? Choi oh, and Lai. Google. I can't help the feeling that our producer is downstairs laughing at how much I don't know. But much more likely she fell asleep. No, uh, it's the right thing to do. She's doing the right thing. Uh, Chinese statesman, diplomat, and revolutionary who served as the first premier of the People's Republic of China. Ah. So the uh, the Kickstarter for the communist revolution. There you go. Bridge on the River Kwai movie starring uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> yeah. And a good one. And who? And a very good uh, movie. Yeah, it's a good it's a good film. Yeah, uh, influential, influential, and also practical effects, but an amazing practical effect. Yes, Lebanon. Right. Lebanon. I think we're okay with Lebanon. I feel like it's uh, trouble there uh, frequently. Yeah, Charles de Gaulle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. California baseball. I don't know. That feels to me like the Dodgers moving to LA. Oh, yes. 
and probably they were the first California team. Yes. Okay. Yep. Baseball feels very East Coast, especially when you live here and you're like, oh, these people fucking love it. Yep. Don't even seem to notice how fucking boring it is. Stark weather, I have no idea. What's stark weather? The stark weather, maybe a serial killer, a first serial killer. Do you remember the stark weather homicide, darling? Yeah. No. Huh. <laughs> she really knows her homicides, and that one's uh, not yeah. quick. Stark weather. Well, look it up. Okay, I'm looking. Stark weather. Stark weather murders. Well, murdered 11 people in Nebraska and Wyoming in the 50s. My goodness. Okay, that guy seems like he was bad. Homicide. Just homicide. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Yeah, yeah. Children of thalidomide. And I know that, but remind me what thalidomide is the thing that created the awful birth defects, right? Right. It was a medication for morning sickness, I think. That's right. And there were all the... The yeah, little a babies. And, uh, a lot of flipper arms. Yeah. Horrifying birth defects. And flipper arms are bad if that's not what you wanted. Right. If you're a land animal. Yeah. Not ideal. No. Buddy Holly. And I'm, well, I got to imagine though it's Buddy Holly and also Buddy Holly dying. Right. Because those happen real fast. Yeah. Unfortunately, that guy, yeah. Ben Hur. Hey, who's this new kid on the scene? Oh, he's dead. <laughs> space monkey. Space, space monkey. monkey. Laika, I think, was the space yeah. monkey. No, that was the space dog. Oh. I know Laika. neither of them came back. Yeah, yeah, they don't come back. Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. <laughs> yeah. Hula hoops. Yep. Big craze. Pass. Castro, of course. No. And Edsel is a no-go. I do like that lyric. Edsel is a no-go. It's just a bad car. It's uh, it's clunky, but charming. That's not too bad. All right. Give me okay. one second. One of my dogs is uh, asking for a favor, so I'm going to do something real quick. Are you going to help him move? Yes, exactly. Amori, would you take Tinkerbell outside? Thank you. Amori. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, he's a good fella. <laughs> Only he's going to help Ink go outside to go potty. Edsel is a no-go. I do like that lyric. That's just real simple and straight to the point. Hey, here was a terrible car. Yep. Sorry no about story. that. Now, this next one. Um, let me do this one and then you do the end because... This one's so tiny before you have to read the um, <laughs> chorus. But U2, they can't be about U2. It's not. It's about the U2 spy plane. There you go. Okay. For which U2 is named. That makes so, so much more sense. <laughs> like, what? U2, is it a Soviet spy plane or was it our spy plane? It was our spy plane that discovered the missiles in Cuba. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. U2 spy plane. Okay. Right the Lockheed, the Lockheed U2. Okay. Good on. Uh, by the way, is what every history teacher did when this song came out. <laughs> they made all their students learn everything in it. Yeah. And then and then a generation lost affection for Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Singman Ray. Singman Ray. I feel like uh Korean War guy <laughs> president of south korea there it is man okay well you, you did good Not close uh, payola and that of course is the radio thing oh radio play scandal payola and kennedy just kennedy yep just kennedy chubby checker of course yep um i will by the way chubby checker and fats domino i believe chubby checker is named Making Fun of Fat Domino, if I'm remembering yes. correctly. Which is great. Psycho Belgians in the Congo. And that refers to they opened a waffle house in the Congo and you could get Belgian waffles. 
right? Yeah, and that's why uh, it's the wealthiest country on earth. Yeah, because, and they're great, by the way. You know, if you get really drunk and you end up in the Congo, <laughs> it's so good to just go to that Waffle House. By the way, that's real drunk. Yeah, <laughs> Waffle House drunk is a special kind of drunk, that's for sure. True, and in the, in, in the Congo, well, forget it. Yeah, you're like, oh, it's Lord. Advil before you go to bed. Jesus, I know we were in Phoenix. How do we get up here? Uh, we didn't start right. the fire. We didn't. Certainly. Mm -hmm. It was always burning since the world's been turning. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you, which you'd think it'd be smaller by now. Yeah. Burn, burn, burning that long. Right. Do you think you do we have oxygen for that? Yeah. Maybe it was huge. The earth used to be just giant, and now it's just a yeah. yeah. It's just burned down to a little coal that we live on. Yeah. We didn't start the fire. We didn't know we didn't light it, but we tried to fight it. We sure did. Sure tried. God bless us for trying. We're great. Hemingway. <laughs> uh, overrated, I think. I do too. I think. I think he's partly rated well because he killed himself. Right. And I think that says a lot about us as a species. Yes, that we respect that sort of behavior. I've said this before that Hemingway is respected for killing himself. Nobody is respected for trying to kill themselves. <laughs> That's true. Well, I mean, if you fail at anything, really. Yeah. Well, I've always said, I don't think you should kill yourself. But if you're going to do it, do it. Don't fail because then... Right, then you have one more thing to feel bad about. Yes. You don't need that. And everybody would go, I never heard anything sad. That's what people would say now. <laughs> because people are dicks. People are dicks. I think that's another thesis of this song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Hemingway Eichmann. Feel like that's another spy scandal? Yeah. Are you looking or you don't care anymore? No, I know who Eichmann is, but let me double check. Oh, yeah. No, this that one I thought was that we all know who Eichmann is. Oh, this is from when he was on trial. I yeah, that, yeah, that'd be the Nazi. Yep, that was the Nazi. Stranger in a Strange Land. Literature. <laughs> right? Still, uh, music. Music? Yeah. What is Stranger in a Strange Land? I don't know. Stranger in a Strange Land. Huh. Oh, now, now I'm getting some scoffing. Stranger in a Strange Land is a thing that also shows up as a lyric a lot. It is a science fiction novel. By it's a Hunter. novel. I thought so. It was literature. Huh. Okay. I got that one right. Yay. My bye wife laughed at me. <laughs> Dylan, Berlin. Bay of Pigs Invasion. Major yep. failure by the CIA. Yeah. Lawrence of Arabia. Every I feel like everybody's mom loved that movie. Yeah. Sexy old time. Sexy old time. British Beatlemania. No Not idea. Let me look confused. it up. Not to be confused. Yeah. That Portuguese Beatlemania. <laughs> <laughs> British Beatlemania. Weird phrasing, but... You got to make it fit. Yeah. Old Miss. What happened at Old Miss? It is a university. Yeah. It, so it's probably something shitty happened. It's in Mississippi. So it's probably. Um, oh, was that uh, integration? No, that was high school and elementary school, wasn't it? Old Miss integration, 1962. I was right. Right. You win again. Riot of 62. Yeah. Okay. Old Miss John Glenn, astronaut. Yep. First Liston, in space. Liston beats Patterson. Oh, Sonny Liston beats George George Patterson. Uh, uh, Robert Pattinson. Yeah, but George Liston beats Robert Pattinson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pope Paul. Pope Paul, sure. Yeah. Malcolm X. Yeah. British politician sex. Is this the thing that Hugh Grant made the limited series about where he was gay? Oh. 
or is it the applicant? No, that's before. I was, <laughs> and I can't really type into Google British politician sex. I don't think it'll get me anywhere. Sex scandal of 1963. Yeah. Who was it? Who did it? Had an extra extra men extra marital affair with the 19-year-old model. Wow, good for him. John Profumo. <laughs> well, I hope he enjoyed it. God, can't tell he couldn't. JFK. Blown away. No idea. The one thing he didn't have to explain to us in this song. Yeah. He clarified. What else do I have to say? Is that a strange a weird thing to say? But I think what he means is like, if you don't know from JFK getting murdered that we didn't start the fire, what else can I tell you? Yeah, it's a weird place for that phrase to take place in the song because there's a lot of work. <laughs> of... There's a lot more going on. Yeah. Um, I'll abbreviate the chorus. Uh, no fire, still burning. Didn't light it. Tried to fight it. <laughs> you go. All right. I got to write this down real quick. Because um, I just want to say something after. Anyway, I'm just writing a note. Sorry. Yep. Uh, birth control. Sure. That I was a big F deal because. Big F deal. It freed up women to make. You know, Iran choices without as much fear. So pe there was some freedom that came with that and the trouble that comes with freedom. Yeah. And they could go to grad school and they could plan their lives a little bit. Yep. Oh, yep. Damn. That was a big. That's funny how that's such a big deal because it really is. Yeah. And we're still fighting over it, which is so stupid. Yeah. But again, goes to the point of the song. Yep. Ho Chi Minh. I think we're good there. Richard oh. Nixon back again. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Moonshot, Woodstock, Watergate, Punk Rock. We know all those. Now we feel smart again. Yeah. And also maybe the coolest line in the song. Yeah. Moonshot, Woodstock, Watergate, Punk Rock. That's great. That is great. Bagan, Reagan. I know this. Palestine. It doesn't matter what area you're talking about. That place is a problem. <laughs> terror on the airline yeah but this would be back when they thought that was a terror on the airline Oof. yeah see they all everything comes back and gets gets a little worse everything gets worse because reagan was their trump yes and it, but at least you could fool yourself into thinking he was well, some people could yeah but I, rem I remember when Reagan happened and we were all like, this is fucking crazy. Yeah. An actor. And he was. Oh, and he was. Yeah. He was a shitty person. <laughs> as it yes. turns out. Ayatollah's in Iran. Well, that would make sense that that's where he would be. <laughs> and Russians in Afghanistan. Boy. Yeah. They shouldn't be there. Nope. And, you know, it's funny. Russians in Afghanistan is a critique of them being there. And then not that long later, Americans in Afghanistan. Yep, with the same results. You know, I don't know if it's a lyric in the remake, uh, not remake, but the the continuation. But if they did Americans in Afghanistan, that would have been clever. I hope they did. Oh, I wonder if they did. I have to listen to it again. Really good. It is okay. good. But that if you didn't do that, you missed a trick because that makes such a good point if you did. Amen. Um, there's only one more. Why don't you go ahead and do the last? Well, probably the most dubious inclusion. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was it like the first primetime game show or something? No, right? No, I don't. It's... Wheel of Fortune. It must have been big in his house. That's what I think. I liked it is what that is. <laughs> yeah, I liked it or my mom liked it. Wheel of Fortune, Sally Ride. Good there. Heavy Metal Suicide. Remember that? I do. Uh, was it Judas Priest? Yeah. Two kids who liked Judas Priest, and one of them shot his face off and lived. Yeah. 
one did not. And then there were uh, a lot of pushback. Yeah. Foreign debts, not new. Homeless vets, not new. Look at this trifecta. AIDS, crack, Bernie gets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Bernie gets. Did I show you? I don't think I did. On my dentist's website, there's a page of reviews from customers. I was like, oh, the doctor took care of me and was very nice to me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, four stars and then their name. And one of them is Bernard Getz. I don't know. There's probably multiple Bernard Getzes in New York City. But I've chosen to go ahead and believe it's him. That's got to be that Bernie Getz. God, that's... Anyway, he loves my dentist. So I feel pretty safe. Yeah. Well, hypodermics on the shore. This is one of those that was like a huge bummer story when it happened and now is just accepted. It's just the way that it is. Yeah. The way there's so many of these things. China's under martial law. Don't That's remember what happened there that i'm assuming that's related to that famous picture of the tank. oh yes oh yes the student revolution yep rock and roller cola wars and he's out i can't take it anymore <laughs> always very funny rock and roller cola wars now it was michael jackson had the like a pepsi commercial where he caught fire yeah yeah who were the other rock and rollers involved? Also, rock and roll. That's so weird to yeah, because I've never thought about the lyric that way. I've just thought about the cola wars, and now rock and roll cola wars. <laughs> Make it hard to Google. Yeah, sometimes called the soda wars. <laughs> Oh, I like uh, the soda wars. Okay, so Michael Jackson and then Coca-Cola countered with Bill Cosby. Okay. <laughs> well, both monsters, so. Both monsters and perverts. Only one that is even in music. Yeah. Well, I actually, Bill Cosby did release uh, an album of parody songs and satire songs. Did he? He did. He did. My father owned it for, his, I guess, just perverts. Remember when uh, uh, when uh, Britney Spears did a Pepsi, huh? Mm -hmm. He did a big Pepsi ad, right? Yeah, it's like those ads are jinxed. Yeah. Man, she's a pretty lady. Yeah, she's all right. Just uh, not ever surrounded by good people. No. None of those people ever are. The Beatles, one of the things they talked about was they talked about how they felt bad for Elvis because they at least had each other to understand the situation. Oh, that's nice. And that's got to be the case with Michael Jackson was definitely scarred by his weird dad. And yeah. And Brittany, Lord, was she just. Yeah. Sucked dry. Really. The fact that she lived is amazing. Amazing. Oh, it's my Lord. I can't wait to read this to you, but. Um, is it we didn't start the fire? Um, well, I can't wait to read that either. I'll go ahead and read that. And it, we did not start the fire. Nope. It has always been burning. I don't know why he, he went that way with the end. Ever <laughs> since the world's been turning, it doesn't even fit the music anymore. We, for sure, we didn't start the fire. He added words. <laughs> we, we, no, it wasn't us who lit it. But we did try to fight it. That's see, no, it doesn't even rhyme. It makes sense. No, this is what I got to read, read to you is the comment section at billyjoel.com. Oh. Hi, Billy Joel. <laughs> she thinks he's reading this. <laughs> Can you add verses to this song about the events of 2020? <laughs> Oh. oh, great. Hi. Hi, Billy Joel. Oh, my God. Another one. Hi, Mr. Billy Joel. 
a pleasant day. Allow oh. me to introduce myself. I am Grace Guerrero and works as copyright coordinator for CNE Publishing Inc. Philippines. Oh. I'm presently working on the copyright permits for our textbook in English, Warning the World, the Art of Creative Writing. And I would like to request to use an excerpt from your song, We Didn't Start the Fire. Very kind guidance. Theme. Please find here with the excerpt taken. Wow. People don't understand Facebook. No. Oh, my God. That's great. Wow. People don't understand famous. People don't understand much. Wow. She's making his point. Right. Oh, <laughs> it's ever been this way. Dear oh. William, I am a big fan of this Macbeth. I was wondering if you could stop by our local township. <laughs> oh, I will pay you in mutton. <laughs> Great. Wow, that's incredible. That was a wonderful way to cap that off. That's so stupid. Wild. How when I was a kid, I was a little kid. I might have thought I could. Now, I don't feel too bad about that North South Korea thing anymore because. Right? Oh my God. It's beautiful in a way. It kind of is. And <laughs> the other part is when people do that and then develop an anger towards the celebrity. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He ignored me. Oh. Oh, that's so. Great. Oh. Um, we did it, man. Yeah, we did. Uh, before I forget, the video for Turn the Lights Back On. Yeah. The new good video, not the old just lyric video. Have you seen it? Uh, the one where uh, he's shape-shifting through time? Yeah. Yes, I have seen it. I think I like it. I do, too. I noticed something today that I somehow missed. At the beginning, he has a notebook and it's handwritten and it says famous last words underlined. Oh. And he turns it over and it's a blank page. And with a pen, he's thinking. Oh. Clever. Clever. I like, yeah. Now, does he have a song called Famous Last Words? We've talked about it. Okay. And There's it's on River. Of humanity, that's why I asked. Yeah, it's on River of Dreams. Right. And it's and we and we speculated when we did that episode that because of Billy Joel being who he is, we were like, I bet that literally is the last thing he wrote. Yeah. And he seems to be confirming that in the video. Yeah. Love. I gotta watch it again. Yeah, me too. I Re-listen to the song after, I'm glad I did this, because, you know, the song comes out, you immediately like it because you're just glad it exists. Yep. So I wanted to wait for a while and see, do I really like it? And I do, which is very nice to discover. I play it in my headphones, and uh, I wear headphones on the way to work, so I don't have to talk to crazies. And there's a part when I take the B train, the B train goes over one of the bridges, over the Manhattan Bridge, I think. So you're outdoors suddenly, you've been underground through Brooklyn, and then you go boom, and you go over the bridge, and you look to the left, and there's the Brooklyn Bridge and the Statue of Liberty, and I'll play it in my headphones while I cross the bridge. Oh, what a great new like tradition. Extra New york -y. and I'm like, that's a really good song. That is a good new tradition. Yeah, I, I love it. And it uh, takes a while because you're so used to just being comfortable with all his music. Yeah. So you have to get your dumb old brain to go, hey, it's okay that this exists. Shh, shh, shh. Don't yeah, be this is one of them. This is oh. one of his songs. It's okay. Don't be scared, sir. Don't be yeah, scared. Stop freaking out. But hey, you have nicknames for your good lady, right? Yeah, sure. I do too. So here's something that I call my wife sometimes. Boo, I call her Boo. Nice. Sometimes I call her Ma, make other people uncomfortable. That's something we because it, it, it. 
his newest nickname, and I don't know if it'll stick, but it was funny to me, and it made her laugh because it wasn't on purpose. She asked me something. She said, did you go doing such such, such and such? And I went, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so my new sweetie name for my wife is ma'am. Nice. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> you wouldn't necessarily go for it on purpose. No. So I no. just I said, I want her to start saying, I love you, sir. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> no, wait a minute. <laughs> and I love you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some formality in this relationship. Yes. It's I about time. We exclusively babe each other. Oh, uh, that's nice. Yeah. Can't think of another. We talk to shitheads sometimes. <laughs> Not much. We have decades and decades of like, because oh, you know, we have like, this is our song from when we were together in the beginning. Right. And then other our songs will pop up. Right. You have a deep and rich tapestry. Because, yeah, because you do. relatively new at this over here. Uh, yeah. So working, working with Babe. Yeah, Babe's a good one. There ain't nothing wrong with Babe. Fun. Right? Speaking of Babe and the era it comes from, I am very proud of this hint. Oh my God, let me get my glasses. Love will keep us together. Which I think is Captain and Tennille. That's Captain and Tennille. Here's, <laughs> you know, here's what I'll say initially. This is one of those, you get it right away or you don't get it, which I love those kind of clues. Right. Well, Captain Jack is the first thing I think of. And that's not it, but that could be it, but it's not. Could be it. So the captain and a dog. He's got dogs. Now, the song is significant. Uh, we'll keep us together. That was a number one hit for them. Right. When <laughs> was it a number one hit? <laughs> In the 70s? That's right. Captain 70s? When in the 70s do you think it was? Uh, probably the late 70s. What, mid to late 70s? Yeah, mid to late 76, 77. Earlier. 75. Yes. Captain se Captain 75. <laughs> yeah, when when in when in 75? Oh boy. Uh, spring? Nope. Fall. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> the summer of 75. It was! That was a hit in the summer of 75. Uh, Captain and Tennille were the popular studies. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's great about putting them in the sun? We thought it would work out, but they did get divorced. They did get divorced. But they look like they're meant for each other. <laughs> yeah i you know when you're together that long it is sad that they got divorced but i'm almost almost to what i think is it's a perfectly successful marriage you were together a very yeah. long yeah that's like uh term limits yeah they i've heard of it happening to people and i hope it doesn't happen to us and you, you always hope it doesn't happen to you but i've heard people who hit a certain thing chemically that ruins their marriage. Like oh, going through a uh, menopause or the different changes that happen to fellas, it changes your damn brain. Yeah, your brain is always damn changing. Yeah. And you, also, you know, I was married once before and we have always said like, oh, we, we our marriage didn't fall apart or anything. It, like it finished, <laughs> like concluded. Yeah. Like, all right. That's all we had for this. And did you stay on? Are you on good terms? Yeah, we that's don't talk a lot, but when we do, it's always very nice, and very genial. That's good. Yeah, yeah. A mutual friend of ours, and I won't say his name because that's rude. But but his first marriage ended in divorce, and also never talking again. That's how, wow. and that was valid. In that, <laughs> yeah, often is. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Billy Joel. He released that Cold Spring Harbor album, which went nowhere. 
he ran away to California and uh, was kind of not in the music business until a radio station started playing Captain Jack, which uh, drew interest from Columbia Records. And uh, Clive Davis, I think, got a hold of him, brought him out and signed him. Uh, I can't, I won't ask you what radio station, but in what city was this radio station? Wow. Okay. Yeah, he was, he was out. He was going to quit. I'm going to say it happened in, um, Chicago. No. no. East, Easter. Easter. Um, New York. <laughs> <laughs> too far too far boston uh southwest from there okay but that will music uh, city oh yeah oh um the home of home of uh holland oats uh the roots yeah <laughs> see i'm blanking i know what city it is and this is annoying me because now i'm blanking on the stupid city a uh, motown home of motown uh, no, Philadelphia. Still, uh, I didn't have it. I didn't have it. Brotherly love. Home of the city of brotherly. Our Philadelphia love. radio station start. Some DJ picked it up and was like, "This song jams," and I'm going to play it a lot. And yeah. somebody in Columbia was like, "Who is this fucking dude?" I know this has been said before as a joke, but it really is true. Philadelphia, city of brotherly love, never been a phrase said more ironically, right? Yeah, although I feel like they maybe get a bum rap because their sports fans are cuckoo birds. True. I can't speak for the city itself. True. Good old Dr. J played there. My my first basketball love as far as an athlete that I was like, oh, my God, he's so great. That's worth something. Yeah, he will never leave my brain. It's like him and Muhammad Ali as far as uh, gentlemen that really shaped my view of sports and how amazing it can be yeah and you're almost ruined by having them be your heroes yeah well i always say to people like i stopped watching basketball after i left chicago because i was there the same six years that the jordan <laughs> won championships for them yeah it's absurd like, because uh, yeah who well, who's your other guy lebron's great lebron i will say is a better person Seems to be, yeah. Like he opens schools and stuff. He doesn't punch Steve Kerr in the face. <laughs> Although I'm, I'm now I'm down with the Knicks now. It Did, helps when you physically go to the game. How? Uh, oh, the Knicks won, right? Yeah, yeah. Big comeback win, huge. It was fucking great to be there. I uh, never been a Knicks fan, of course, but now that the Bulls are not to be even thought about for a while. <laughs> I, I just appreciate basketball now. So I'm not really a team fan so much as I am the game. So yeah. I enjoyed when the Nuggets won. And I would love it if the Knicks could win. They're not this year. I don't think. Look that way. They're, a lot would have to go strange. The one thing is they do this thing that other teams don't. Uh, uh, defense. They play this thing called. Yeah. They play this crappy little defense. Um, and so it's fun to watch. Yeah. And nobody else plays any version of defense, really. Not really. A lot of 140-point games. Yeah. Which is entertaining for a while, but then you're like, you know, there's a reason I don't always go see the Globetrotters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to do New York State of Mind. And how crazy is it that we haven't? That list is crazy. Uh, I'll I'll tell you folks something really quick, a little behind the scenes, and before we shut it down, we should have made a list when we started this show. No doubt. But we didn't. So yeah. I went about a little project of making a list so just so we could figure out what's left. And I imagined what was going to be left would be like something called the fart song <laughs> or whatever dregs could be left. I know. I'm looking at it now, and I'm like, blonde over blue. That makes sense that we missed that. Yeah. The rest of the list. 
it must have been like by week two we thought oh we've already done that probably <laughs> right i'm sure and i'm sure it was the same so in the very beginning what i was thinking of course eventually we're going to do um scenes from an italian restaurant but for a little while i was like but i want to hold on to it for a little while yeah just because you want to this must have been in the i want to hold on to it list and then Yep, and we also both have the propensity to choose what would be less interesting and more annoying, <laughs> which is the smaller songs. Yes, so... Giant hits. So enjoy next episode, Something You've Heard Of. <laughs>